way today is april the 13th today is london moore's birthday she turned seven years old today um so yeah i said i was gonna give y'all a story time about uh her birth and me having preeclampsia and health syndrome with her so here's story time so honestly i actually had a really good um like pregnancy with her um i found out i was pregnant um while i was at work actually so i was working at um presidius dialysis center as a dialysis technician and i had this like sharp pain um to come through you know my vagina area and so i went to the store on my break and um got a test and took the test while i was at work my best friend worked with me and I took the test and it was positive it was it was positive i was pregnant with her and um when i found out i was about four to five weeks when i found out i was pregnant with her um throughout my entire pregnancy with her um everything was going really well i was still working um like 13 to 16 hour days um, at the dialysis center on my feet um a lot of the time if anybody is a dialysis technician and either works at davida or for Cineas, then you know what i mean if you have to open the clinic if you have to close the, the clinic those are some really long days some really long hours um so and then i was still picking up extra shifts as well um and so what ended up happening it was so crazy one of my co-workers um was like at the end of the shift they was like oh my god to Charlotte, like their ankles are like really swollen like they're super swollen and really big and i was like well i mean you know regular pregnancy swelling you know and she was like yeah but they kind of like they really swollen so i don't know like i really didn't think anything of it because then i didn't know anything about preeclampsia i didn't know anything about help syndrome i didn't know anything about that the worst thing that i had going on was some pelvic pain and some round ligament pain when i was working other than that i just felt in some swelling other than that i just thought that everything was normal what's up boo and no you just had chocolate ice cream and you just had a cupcake okay so what you can do is after dinner then you can have it okay after dinner after dinner okay thank you ma'am um maybe for like an hour or you can ask grandma if you can use her tablet well today's your birthday she might make an exception she might not so yeah that's london the birthday girl in the background so, um, I end up leaving work, um, and at the time, my son was two, two, yeah, Kamari was two years old, and, um, my auntie and my uncle used to watch him for me, uh, while I would work my long days, and she lived in the apartments behind me. So I got off from work. I went to go pick up my son from work, um, from from the sitter, and um, I got home. Um, we took the you know showers and baths. I cooked dinner. You guys, I still remember the meal that I cooked. Um, I might even if I can find the picture, I will insert the picture left or to the right. But I remember what I, we sat down, I had made, um, some corn on the cob, some chicken rice, and some chicken, baked chicken wings. So we had some baked chicken wings, 
they chicken wings, chicken rice, and corn on the cob was dinner. Um, at that time, um, I had an obsession with the haves and the have-nots. Um, and I had just got home just in time to do everything. And me and my two-year-old, my son, we sat up on the bed and we was watching the haves and the have-nots. And I got this excruciating pain um, in the right, like, right side of my belly, like the right upper uh, quadrant of my belly. And um, I didn't know what it was because it wasn't on the left side. It was literally just on the right side, right upper side of my belly. And it hurt so bad. It It felt like, if anybody's ever been pregnant before, it felt like a contract like a really hard contraction but with no relief so it it didn't go away it was just a constant like it didn't loosen up it didn't it just was a very tight painful contraction on the right side and i i didn't know what to do and so i called my aunt and i told him i was like y'all something's wrong um, I need y'all to come over here quickly. Like, the only thing that I could do was just, I made it from my bedroom to my living room to try to get to the door. Because they literally live right behind me. So, I had to get to my living room. And I only thing I did was I was able to make it to the couch. And Kamari, my two-year-old, was able to open the, unlock the door for me. Because I didn't have the top latch, the top latch locked just the bottom and um he was able just to unlock the door for me when they were banging on the door and they were able to get in they called 911 um the ambulance for them to come and get me <laughs> lie to you guys not i told them that i had to before the ambulance even got there i had told them no i need to go in the bathroom and make sure that I'm fresh. Like, even though I had already, like, took my shower and things like that, like, I don't know. I was just paranoid. Maybe I was just a little bit delusional. Like, I went back in the bathroom just to, like, double check myself to make sure I was good because I think subconsciously I knew that I was having that baby. I was having that baby that night. And so I just had to you know do another double check to make sure i was good down there and everything was good the ambulance came they took me to my local hospital um where i was supposed to be delivering at but because i was 34 weeks that hospital didn't deliver at 34 or 35 weeks so i had um to be shipped to john hopkins so what ended up happening i ended up going to the labor and delivery while i was at the hospital they had me hook up to the monitors and everything like that. And my doctor came in and said, you have severe preeclampsia. I was so, like, out of it. I didn't know what that meant. I, I still didn't know what it was. That's just what she said. You have severe preeclampsia. You're 34 weeks. You're high risk. We don't have the capability of delivering your baby here safely. So we have to call ambulance because you have to go to John Hopkins University. So I don't know. Eventually, like some phone calls were made. My mom ended up being up there with me. So we get to John Hopkins University in Baltimore. You guys, the only thing I remember, um, the only thing I remember is me having like really, really, really bad headaches to where the, they weren't able to like, they had to keep the lights on low and the blinds closed because my headaches were really bad. I remember my blood pressures being extremely high. Um, I remember my mom being there with me. Um, I remember the nurses coming in my room and whew, did I know that was going to happen?
I remember the nurses coming in my room and just trying to help me with like blood pressures and trying to get my blood pressures down and giving me all these like Tylenol, Benadryl concoctions to be able to um, help with my headaches. My blood pressures were so high that they had me on a medication called magnesium where They had me on this medication called magnesium. You guys, magnesium is so nasty. You can taste it when it's going through your, your IV. But they had me on the medication called magnesium because my blood pressures were so high that I could have seized. I could have started having seizures. That's how high my blood pressures were. So they had me on, um, they had me on that. Um, and that's, and that's all I remember. I remember, um, them coming and just kind of checking me to see how dilated and things I was. I remember, um, it was a lot of pain the contractions and things like that so i did end up getting an epidural but what i remember about the only thing i remember about the epidural was like the anesthesiologist took so long to get the epidural in my back and so if you've never had an epidural before or my moms that have had epidurals before you have to sit on the side of your bed you have to bend over in like a um uh uh like a hunched over position like on the bed i remember um one of the nursing students and my mom standing in front of me and um so that i wouldn't move when they was giving the they were giving me the epidural and i just remember it taking so long um because they weren't able to like get it in right it just, it took a really long time. And so while I was bent over, <laughs> all of a sudden I just, I had felt the need to push. And I just kept telling them like, I need to push. I feel like I need to push. And it was like, no, 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 you can't move, you can't move. And I couldn't move because they literally had, by that time had the needle in my back, but it was just taking so long. Like I was hunched over for so long. I couldn't move, so I had to just bear it and take it until they got done. When he got finished putting the epidural in my back, um, I don't even think it was like 20 minutes. I don't even think it was like 20 minutes, maybe 15 to 20 minutes, and it was time for me to push. And I literally only, the epidural only worked on one side of my body. Um, so if my mom's if you're thinking about getting an epidural, there is a chance that, um, that's my dog. Um, there's a chance that it may only work on one side of your body. Um, so you'll feel numb on one side and you'll feel everything on the other side. Um, and so that's what happened to me. I, I felt everything on one side and numb on the other. <clears throat> and when they told me to push, I pushed. And when I was reading the notes the other day from John Hopkins in my mind, John, I think they said I pushed maybe three or four times and she came out. Um, London was um, born a preemie, 34 weeks. Um, she was about four pounds. And I'll insert some pictures um, of what she looked like to the left or to the right so you guys can see um and then after they had to put her in the incubator and take us to the NICU London was in the hospital for a month I was in the hospital for like four or five days um but even after I delivered I still was with the headaches I remember them having to put a Foley catheter in me and um my urine had started to turn like a Kool-Aid purple. My urine was like a Kool-Aid purple. Um, so like my kidney function was declining. 
Um, they had to run a bunch of like CT scans because they couldn't understand why my headaches weren't going away. Um, they had to end up taking me off the magnesium. So with that being said, the only thing I remember about them taking me off the magnesium was the doctor was like, you have to take her off because you can't be on magnesium for so long. And there's legit nothing else that we can do for her. Like she literally has to fight this on her own. Like her body just has to do the rest. And up here. So my body and God did the rest. A lot of my experience or about that birth was very blotchy. I don't remember a lot. My mom was there. She remembers more than more than what I remember. Um, but yeah, that's her birth story. She was in she was um in the NICU for a month. She was hooked up to a whole lot of things and tubes in her nose and it was just i remember it being really hard to leave her because on my last day there um i went they rolled me to the NICU in the wheelchair um and i had to say my goodbyes and i had to leave her and i didn't know how long she was gonna be there um but i had to go back home because i still had a two-year-old i had to take care of um i did breastfeed her so um, I was living in Waldorf at the time. So from Waldorf to Baltimore, it's a little bit of a hike. So what I was doing, I was pumping. Um, I was exclusively pumping. And then I would pack it up, all the milk up. And then, um, every other day I would go see her, um, and take them my milk supply. And if they ran out of milk, then they would do a supplement, of um formula there until i was able to get back up there and get them more formula and then i was able to breastfeed while i was up there with her so you know we were still able to keep that bond going um and then you know eventually she was able to come home and she was a healthy baby she's still a healthy girl she's here she's seven and um i don't know just really grateful so it's, it's like that's why i was saying in my last video like even like my doctors didn't catch that i had severe preeclampsia or help syndrome like i was going to my doctor's appointments regularly and they just never caught it they never caught it in my urine samples that i was leaving they never caught it in my blood work they just never, they never caught it. It was literally, I went to work, I got sick that night, I was fresh to the hospital, and the next day, I delivered. That's how fast it happened. So, if you are a, like a first time mom, or if you're even, like I said before, a mom of multiples, and you've never had severe preeclampsia or eclampsia or help syndrome, just ask any way of what the signs and symptoms are so that that can be something that you're knowledgeable of just in case something happens. At least know, okay, if my blood pressure is spiked, but at 140 over 90 i need to be calling my doctor that's the that's the bare minimum baseline if your blood pressure ever get 140 over 90 take your butt to the hospital anything over 140 over 90 call an ambulance so they can get you to the hospital um and then Sometimes it can be hard to um, even can tell the signs because if your blood pressure, you like, so one of the signs is your blood pressure being high. The other signs is the swelling. Well, pregnancy comes swelling anyway. So it'll be really hard to kind of tell through the swelling unless you notice an excessive amount of swelling, like in your face or, um, 
if you're having like the right sided quadrant stomach pain or if you gained like two, three, four pounds in overnight, um, things like that. Um, they want you to, I got chocolate on my hand. They want you to look out for. So again, pains on the right side of your stomach, your blood pressure is 140 over 90, call your doctor. If you have excessive swelling um, that you weren't noticing before, and if you have gained an excessive amount of weight within 24 to 48 hours, you need to be calling your doctor. Um, so they do have me on right now because of I'm pregnant right now. Um, I'm currently 30 weeks and three days. And so I do take um I do take baby aspirin 81 milligrams twice a day to help with the um, to try to prevent the preeclampsia and health syndrome from developing this time. But, um, I didn't start taking the baby aspirin 81 milligrams until I was 20 weeks. And so, what happens is you go from it being, taking it, start taking it at 16 weeks and having a 50% chance of developing it again. Or, with me start taking the the um baby aspirin at 20 weeks and having and only dropping 20 percent chance of catching it again so um so even though i'm doing what they say to do there is still a chance with this pregnancy that i can develop it again it's in the high 90 percentile um, not only because I had it before my previous pregnancy, um, also because of my age. I'm 36 years old, so I'm considered a geriatric pregnancy. And then on top of that, me being um, what they consider overweight. So I have me being overweight. I have me being a geriatric pregnancy at 36. And I have me... Um, Having had severe preeclampsia and health syndrome in the past, that I'm in the high 90 percentile that um, I could go through the same thing again. So, I don't know. Like, if you guys have any questions, if you feel like I didn't explain something good enough or whatever. Or you just want to have a conversation. Or if there's moms that have had severe preeclampsia or health syndrome before. And you just want to talk about it and have a conversation in the comments. We can definitely do that. So, that is my birthing story of London. His birthday is today. So, I just thought it was a good day to share um, her birth story. Sorry about all the noise in the background. My dog playing with her water bowl and her food bowl. And my son is in his room playing his Xbox game because he's nine years old and wants to be a gamer. My daughter is out on the balcony balcony ba bouncing a basketball um so um just a lot going on but um i don't know thanks for coming to my little story time my little ted talk my little informative um informational piece i hope you guys enjoyed it if you have any questions please let me know um don't forget to hit the subscribe button like share it thank you guys so much